Cô Châu nếu rất trọng hơn tầm ta chơi chơi chuẩn rồi
And good afternoon and welcome back. So before we start, please try to sit in the center so that latecomers could find a seat easily. And for the afternoon session, there will be talks in both LT Lecture Theatre 16 and this classroom, P4701. So, and that development sprints will be continued in room P4704. Uh, next, we will have MicroPython by Mr. Patrick Choi here and Machine Learning on Energy Consumption Prediction by Mr. Benny Huang in Lecture Theatre 16. Uh, so if you encounter any inquiries, please let us know and inquire our staff. Thank you. Uh, so this session on MicroPython introduced how to put Python into micro devices. And I'll speak up Mr. Patrick Choi. He is a part-time tutor and CTO and the webmaster of MicroPython.hk. So may I now pass the time to Patrick. Patrick, please. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, let's introduce myself first. My name is Patrick, and my surname is Choi. And today I'm going to present the MicroPython and a little bit about RT as well. Okay. So MicroPython actually was a kickstarted project by uh, by George in 2013. And this is actually, you know, Python. We always run on PC. But it seems that there's no Python running on micro devices. So George started uh, the Kickstarter project. And now it proven to be very successful. You can see that it raised a lot of money. And it started in 2013 and finished on 2015. And among the world, there are many, many um, people they try to promote this. So in Hong Kong, uh, I found that I talked to George, so it's a very good idea to promote a micro platform in Hong Kong. So micro platform Hong Kong started this year in May. And as uh, we have um, our will to change the world, so we put it as a non-profit organization. And then it's supported by various companies from Hong Kong and they try to give their places to us and provide some uh, free trainings. And this company is here. And we have created our Facebook and then our website. Uh, but now it's in Chinese because we are going to promote locally in Hong Kong. Later on we'll add more English version there. And so, why Python? I, I think you guys are very familiar with Python because today is the Python, uh, Py Python seminar in Hong Kong. So, uh, you can see that uh, there are many languages already migrated to micro devices like C++, uh, C, uh, and then assembly, etc, etc. But without Python. So, George and our team, we together we are going to put this Python into micro devices. So we choose Python because Python is a popular language and then easy to use, yeah, easy to design, and then support OOP, right? So uh, now we are going to um, migrate the whole Python, but actually we develop the whole language uh, using C++. And then we try to um, uh, get it implemented on the micro devices. Okay. So this is what we have done. Uh, we put the Python language on the micro devices. Uh, the first of all, we put on a, uh, you know this one, we call this is an AI thinker. It's actually a Wi-Fi um, microcontroller, it's chips. So it will support Wi-Fi, GPRS, etc., etc., right? Uh, so, and also, we also migrate the Python on a CPU. That means this is actually the Linux mini computer, and it supports ARM CPU. And we choose the language of Python 3.4, and it is. Of course, you know this is quite popular version in, in the Python community and then well, Python.org is the main source site, so all the source code are generated from here. 
and it's very useful for implementation. So you can simply download and then try to prompt it to your microcontroller. Okay. Now we decided to uh, support the AML CPU. Later on, we can support more CPU as well. And we have developed a bot called PI bot. It's called uh, now the version is 1.2 and the popular version is 1.1. So this is uh, what Josh has done. Uh, now you can easily, let's say you Google for micro platform, you can see that this, this CPU is actually very cheap. Do you know what's the price? Try to guess. If you own such CPU with a micro platform that can speed platform, that's around, guess? Below $200,000. Yeah, if you buy a Raspberry Pi, it's about four hundred Hong Kong dollars. That is nearly double the price of uh, of micro platform. That means even a toy car is expensive than this view. Okay, so that's why we are going to uh, lower down the costs of uh, the the central control, and then a I see a controller that can speak Python. That means later on, even those kids. They can try to control the, 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 the devices by simply typing some Python scripts. Okay. Now this is the uh, we call the PYB bot. That means if you are going to test everything, test your Python, on um, you try to control those devices, you need to buy a small we call the PYB bot. Okay. So actually, this is one of the, the, the main center of whole IoT devices. It will include a CPU, uh, a, some kind of memory here. So later on, we can add more memory. And then you can expand your memory by putting more micro SD uh, memory there. And then you can control use a USB drive. Okay, You can use a USB to control it. Um, and we have another module that is called the ESP8266, this one, I will put it here, this can control by Wi-Fi, and then um, control by uh, 3G, okay? So there are two devices. So this one is the CPU one. So the connection is quite simple. So you just put on those pins, and then you can do everything here. Now, I think you're quite familiar with this, right? This is a Python uh, script. You can use a USB drive and then plug, plug into the PYB board. And then turn it on, and then you can see there is a command prompt. And everything there is put on a script to the PY file. And then you can start to run everything. Okay? So you can type those commands, turn on LED, turn on those um, uh, control functions, whatever. Uh, later on, we may put more functions there, okay? Because you know the memory is quite limited, so we can't put those uh, NumPy, SciPy there, right? So we can simply do some of the demo. Okay, so let's explain more. So for this kind of micro devices, it's quite cheap, it's around 100 to uh, 200 Hong Kong dollars. And then you, what you can do, you can use this CPU to do a lot of the control systems in a very low price. So we are doing smart home system. I'm going to show a demo here to how to use a, uh, we call a remote switch to turn off some lights. Okay, it's very simple. And then air conditioner, refrigerator, cookers, etc., etc. So later on, that means your rice cooker can speak high form. So you can simply type some command and your rice cooker will know how to speak with you with Pi in Python, okay? So this is our aim. And of course, later on we're going to do some smart display panels that can speak Python. And later on you can put your math, uh, math portlet, that means you put your graphics on the display board using Python languages. Just type in those uh, commands. And then of course, you know AI, right? So, robotic cars, packing machines, 
And then a lot of the uh, remote control devices can use micro platform as well. So here we have a demo here today. We're going to use Wi-Fi to control all those uh, uh, LEDs. Okay, so later on I will show you this. And now, of course, you know STEM education that is very popular among these days. So we are going to build up some starter kits here for our children. So they can learn how to do the programming in Python. And then very easily to build up a small uh, devices, okay, using Wi-Fi as well. So guess how much is it? Okay. The whole, no, 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 uh, about, if that's the whole package, it's around 200 Hong Kong dollars, including this tech, uh, this plastic box. Okay. And this one is very expensive. Okay. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, it's very cheap, okay. So, we can do a lot of the STEM uh, kits for those. So, we are the, the next competitor of Raspberry Pi. Okay, you know Raspberry Pi, right? So, I think definitely we are going to beat Raspberry Pi soon. Uh, so, join us to, to beat the Raspberry Pi. Okay. Now, this is an online demo. So, you can, if you bring your mobile here, you can access to the website here. So let's let's go. When you try to log on the uh, website called okay, uh, yeah here, yeah it's already here, right? So the website is um, micropython.org and then unicorn, okay? So this is one of the uh, uh, the online demo site. You don't need to have the, the, the micro devices here. So you can simply go to micropython.org and then slash unicorn. And then from here, you can see that uh, you can choose a demo from the script here. So we can put the whole simulation with a CPU and then uh, with the Python language there. So we can do everything here. Say for example, I'm going to test the LED. So you can go to the LED here and then you click the LED there and then run the script. So you can see the LED is shining here. Okay? So this is the command that is controlling the LED. And then you can see the results at the left hand side as well. So besides this, you can do some math functions. Okay, so you can see the this is the what we have done in Python, right? So those kids they can try to do it on online or even we try to use on the micro devices. Okay, so this is one of the, the, the functions here. So remember this website is micropython.org and then Unicorn. And then from here you can do all the simulation online. You get the result instantly instead of buying such devices, right? Okay, so this is the, 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 the demo you can uh, use online. And today we are actually we are going to offer a free workshop for you guys. If you have time, do come to our office exclusively for you guys. It's a two weeks later, I think, right? Uh, we are in Chinwan, so we are going to organize a free workshop with all this equipment here, and then you can try to experience what you are going to do, what the result, expect the result. Okay? So this is the free workshops. And now, we have a live demo by our senior technical consultant here. Uh, we put all uh, necessary equipment here to experience what's called micro-platform. Okay? 
So maybe uh, I will I will try to speak in English, and if Chun, he may speak in Cantonese. We can do some translation. It's alright. Right. Okay, you can. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so it's just a very simple example. Okay. Uh, we will show you a little bit more, or maybe come forward to. You, you guys can come look. forward to see see the actual operations here. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can tell the experience. What is called by the okay. What What is the running of this? Okay. Okay. So uh, it's very simple. Uh, I got a Wi-Fi setup. I have a Raspberry Pi server and uh, micro parking chips. Okay. So. Right here, just a, a button. We 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 build in micro Python. Okay, so I just click. I switch. It's on. So what's the difference? Is there's no any cable connection with this? Okay, I do all of it through Wi-Fi. Okay, just a very simple simple example. Okay, I switch then off. Or I could set up preset like this. So it it just uh, a, a simple demonstration on the uh, how simple could uh, micro parking can do. Okay, I mean this is a very simple example. So so what I did is I send the command I send the command to this server and the server with uh, will communicate with these chips. Okay, these chips with uh, is embedded with micro Python, so they could communicate through Python, just a simple Python. Uh, just a very, very, very easy server. Then, this micro python get the command or the information to tell this relay to over, to open the power to this LED. So, again, I click turn off. Then, turn off command we send it to the Raspberry Pi, and the Raspberry Pi will tell these chips to turn off the LED. So it's just very simple. That is, and through Wi-Fi. Okay, so it's very simple. Yes. Uh, it's just a very turn on and off switch. Okay, uh, so I know, but how do you convert it into one? Oh yeah, uh, this a uh, micro. Let these chips build in here. Oh okay. Yeah, okay. then you already have a micro pack one. So you have two micro pack ones. Yeah, two micro chips. Yeah. Okay. It has a smaller version. Yes. Yes. Okay. So when you press it, okay. So Also, with the advantage of the I have. So I could also ask it to communicate with my hand. Okay. Okay. I, I could do both. So if you're a lazy guy, you're sitting on the sofa, so you can press your button control. Yeah, so because this is one of what we call the uh, Wi-Fi, so later on, if you've got 3G networks, we can um, remove control switch from my mobile, and then I can turn on all those lights, all those air condition in my home before I get get to my home. So this is one of the, the, the demo of music. So actually we need the, the uh, West Street Pi as a server here. Then now we're going to replace this with Microsoft the, the, the CPU. So now this is we call the ESP8266. That is a, what we call the AI think module. So we clone the the, the we clone the micro platform there so they can receive all those commands from micro platform from these devices. Because they support Wi-Fi, so they get the signal, and then we do everything control here. So you can see they're just a small pieces of devices. They can control everything here. So this is same thing as you go, and you will do all the rest. Okay. okay so uh, this is a very really simple demo. So if you like to try, you can ask Chin to to have some experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
on the wall a wall mount it, then you would need to have a replaceable battery. Uh, yes, you could. You could do it like that. Does, okay. it, does it have enough room inside for you to like fit in a 5 volt adapter in that box? In that box? Yeah, I tried. Okay. It worked. <laughs> yeah, I tried. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I tried with the small uh, transformer. Yeah. Okay, so it turned 232 volt. Then I put light uh, soaked with the uh, power cable in. So it's very simple. Yeah. It's very easy. So even kids can do it how to do it. So this is the whole the start of kids. So later on we're going to do this on the yeah, old workshops. So we'll help you guys to do this. Any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, right now, what is the, uh, what is the, the what kind of communication they do? I mean, let's say from, from the switch to your mm. Raspberry Pi server, mm. does it maintain a live connection, like keep, help, keep alive, or does it do a pull? Uh, this one is, uh, I press it, and then I then I give the command. Just press it. Yes, so you say why it like HTTP? Uh, Socket. Okay. Socket. Okay. Yeah. But this one, uh, right now I just like keep asking, keep asking. Oh, we have the command. So the old is the server. Yes. Okay. Yes. But uh, I could have a better, better way to do it. Like that again, I can command. Then I will tell you. Then it's save a lot of time. But however, right now just pulling the server is very, very, very easy. I have another question. I'm not sure if I have an OS. Yeah. How hard it might be. Uh, yes, the the microfiber is the firmware. It's the firmware. So, mm, yeah. in my you know, in my knowledge, so this is a direct comparison with the uh, Arduino, right? Is it? Uh, yeah, some kind mm, of. Is it? Yeah, some yeah. yeah, because yeah. it's like an MCU, but yeah, then yeah, first part is like it has an OS. You can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On it. Because this <laughs> we are going to demo the, the control of editing. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get the idea, but um, what I mean is, if you don't have an OS inside, so. So this is not really uh, this is uh, OS. This yeah, is I know this is OS, OS, but then this one this is it is a direct comparison of Arduino, right? In my kind of, but a little bit different. Right? So you can do a lot more, or you can just do the same thing. Let's do more. Could do more. It, like just running up regular path. Oh, okay, okay. But, uh, of course, there's some oh, more to their still developing. Not fully high products. Yeah, keep adding uh, more like so, really, yeah. oh, okay. Um, in my knowledge, a lot of MCU is running in C or C++. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, how does it the performance comparison? Yeah, it's uh, actually according to our sti statistic, is ten times faster than C++. <coughs> wow. So you can Google it from the, the website and see that uh, a microcontroller actually is faster than C++. And it's more easy to learn. Easy to learn. Yeah, yes. just in case they can learn how to use it. So is it like you can connect in to, with a, a USB to serial interface? Yeah, actually, yes, actually. I, I haven't bought that device to me with me today. It's the, the, the PY board. Okay. So PY board actually can replace the Raspberry Pi. Okay. It have, if you pop in a there is a built-in OS. When you turn on the OS, actually it's running Python. It's running like the REPL. Yeah, it's API. Like, okay. uh, so everything you type in Python, and then you can replace this Raspberry Pi as the server. And then this is we call the Wi-Fi module. So also they have the micro on there. So they will try to receive all those commands and then do some of the control there. So there are actually three, three pieces of micro micro here. And uh, what I mean, porting to ARM is probably not the most challenging thing because there are, you know, there are, there are ex existing uh, ports of Python to ARM architecture, and you can you can pretty much learn from those at least, right? Mm -hmm. How about the uh, for the microcontroller? What kind of architecture, like um, I mean, instruction instruction set architecture are you are you dealing with? Uh. Instructions that we use the uh, actually it is it is a C plus plus at the beginning and it and at the end. Okay. It's developed by C plus plus. Okay. So okay. okay. So back to the basis, it will become some kind of assembly language. Okay. So you, you don't actually have to do a lot of assembly even for the microcontroller. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Just yeah. Because it. Python is on top of the test. Okay. And then we uh, we use all those uh, Python 
when you type those command, you will change the machine language rapidly and then you will go. But to be honest, it's developed by C. So what's the advantage of using uh, MicroPython here if you're already translating to C++? Why wouldn't you use embedded C or embedded C++? Uh, yeah, this is a very good question. Because um, when, when George tried to start this, uh, he tried to use SMB. He found, he found that it's very hard to cook. It's a do, do the cooking. So you use C++ to develop it. And then similarly, the whole Python migrated to this. So that's why the, the original is using C++. So the, the author actually is using that tools to build up the Python. But later on, we are going to try to uh, get rid of the C++ and then make it. And you know, uh, Python is a more higher language than C++. So it will need some kind of pitching tools to do those uh, lower, lower programming. So we are using C++ to do the, uh, the machine translations at that level. But the yeah. difference uh, different is, if I'm going to teach a secondary school student, mm -hmm. I teach them C++ mm -hmm. or I teach them Python. It's so much yeah. easier yeah, to teach them yeah. Python. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's a learning thing, it's a yeah. thing easier yes. to learn. Then the question that comes back is, mm. okay, you've got a Raspberry Pi there as mm. well. I just got the same thing you're yeah. talking about, yeah. just replacing the Raspberry Pi. I mean, that's more powerful, it's got more memory, yeah. it's got more IO more capability. IO why wouldn't you teach on Raspberry Pi? What is the advantage of this over Raspberry Pi? Uh, Raspberry Pi, actually, you, you know this is a Unix there, right? So you need to you know some Unix command before you're going to learn Python. So if we have the rest, uh, the, the micro Python with a really good Python, you have Scratch, the right? you have Scratch, which can teach you that it's a graphical thing, which you can it boots up. Yeah, this is our job to build more now. So you know this project actually start from uh, two years ago, and it's quite new. And then in the whole world, we now we we got about uh, thirty thousand uh, developers working every day, try to improve this. So we're, we're, we're in here, I'm actually like you guys join us. Yeah, you know Python, so you can have. So later on, we will build up this community in Hong Kong even bigger. So, uh, how do you compare this with MicroBeach? Uh, MicroBeach is another uh, high level one, and it's, it's well used in the UK. It's even, even easier to learn, right, to be honest, right? But we stick on Python. We, we want to put the pure Python. The, the, the core of Python on the microchips. So that's, that's why we choose Python and put it on, on the, the microchips. Because, because in terms of uh, ease of learning, yeah, it's of yeah, learning. It, it also supports the drag and drop. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a very hard work, uh, you know, it's a very long, long, long place for, for us to work. Because we just put the Python here. But this is just a start, start project. Okay, thanks. If I understand correctly, one way you can program this device is you just plug it into your computer and yeah. it has an external drive. Uh, you can use a use a USB drive you put on uh, say this Oh you just take the SD card. Yes yeah, the SD card. And then you you just use the, 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 the USB drive and then it will it will obtain the electricity from the USB drive and then just like like that PowerPoint you can tap the command pound and then go to the uh, let's say the you drive. have an interactive session from your computer to, to this? Uh, yeah, we, 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 later on we will have this. So you will have a workshop about it? Yeah, we will have a workshop about it. Yeah. So, uh, Currently there's no interactive... Uh, uh, you cannot work interactively with this device. Well, actually, uh, MicroPython has several flaws. Okay? One of these is uh, I could plug it into USB and communicate through serial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. like the PyBot, they use SD card, but this one using the TTY. And then you have a serial terminal, yeah, you then I can the Python REPL. And yeah, like yeah. using a PuTTY and, and I type this, what, uh, this type this everything okay. and you okay. do it. Oh, this one? Yes. So this one is actually... Uh, uh, you put in a PYB port with a USB drive and then you can see this command. So you can have a, a USB coming out here. So you type every, everything in the um, notepad have all those commands and it will run steadily. Well, of course, you could also like go into the pipe and type. So you showed like this web interface earlier. Is that only for simulation, or is that yeah, something you can actually plug into the? Yeah, uh, it's just actually the same with the the micro PYB board okay. because it's a web based. So it's for demo purpose. Okay.
Okay. But sure, you can't actually use it with the device directly right now. Um, uh, this this a this a web uh, console. Like web console. If you, but at the first time you set it up to connect your Wi-Fi, then you can have a, a web REPL or something like that to control it wirelessly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but, but you have to of course plug in the power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got many uh, accessory right now for my uh, for micro platform. So for example, uh, we got the Wi-Fi module. So besides Wi-Fi module, later on we have VG module, USB, etc., etc. So more and more um, accessory will be coming in. Okay. Okay. So any questions? Um, about the workshop, can I bring other people, like my kids? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you teach you teach him or teach her to to do the the yeah. Everything. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to use those or uh, you know those electronic uh, quite dangerous. So we put everything here. We wrap those those uh, wires, and then we can try to do like like this a okay. small scale workshop. Okay. What, what's the what's the what's the youngest uh, audience that can that you think can actually learn this? Uh, I don't know, but <laughs> my my little girl seven years old. It's quite quite easy to understand this. But okay. but girls are still girls. Just a few hours and then say, oh, it's too boring. <laughs> <laughs> so I would prefer baby boys. Okay. Baby boys <laughs> so actually, we are, later on, we're going to build some robotic cars or uh, some, say, uh, music boxes. And you can just play some music boxes. Okay. So Okay. okay, so I will uh, uh, let the 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 one you the other other groups. Thank you, thank you. So you can feel free to take my name card and then choose name card here, and then we are going to have the uh free workshop later on.